the real power of the chair in these matters is not a power of enforcement or insistence, it's the power of moral suasion. And if Speaker Hoyle were inclined to say, this is a most unusual and deeply regrettable series of events over the last nine days. First, Prime Minister, your remarks in the chamber last week, which were wholly inappropriate, Mm. gratuitous and offensive. And secondly, what appears to be actions directly flowing from your abuse, namely the attempted hustling and intimidation of the Leader of the Opposition and David Lammy, in the circumstances you should apologise. I think that it's a no-lose situation for Speaker Hoyle. Either it works and the Prime Minister buckles, which he should, or it doesn't work, in which case I don't myself think Speaker Hoyle comes off worse. I think he's done the decent thing. He will be respected for it. And the Prime Minister will look the very small person that he has demonstrably shown himself to be. Now, one of these days, in addition to praising you for your insightful and laconic style, which makes you the envy of millions around the country, I will perhaps overcome my natural shyness and tell you what I really think. (laughs) Have you just diplomatically told us, and you do have this, I remember from when you appeared on Full Disclosure, this astonishing ability to interview yourself. That's three of the questions that I was planning to ask you. Sorry, my apologies, I should try to do your job. Well, you are. This is you putting me out of a job. This is a bit like being the the, the presenter equivalent of self-service tills in the supermarket. (laughs) I'm sorry. No, quite the opposite. Um, Have you just diplomatically... Uh, told us what you would have done if you were still in the Speaker's chair. That is what I would have done. Right. But it is open to different views. Of course. There is nothing that isn't. No action you take or no decision to take no action can escape criticism, sometimes correstating criticism. So, you know, although I'm not normally accused of lacking self-confidence no. or conviction in my own beliefs, I'm not saying that that's the only approach Some people listening might say, good on, John, that's the right way to handle it. We welcome that. Other people might be sitting there thinking, thank goodness that ghastly man is no longer in post. We utterly reject his approach and we prefer the approach of the incumbent. But the point of coming on these programmes is to say what one does think, not what one doesn't think. And if you ask me, is that the course of action I would have taken, possibly risking great hostility from the government benches that I would have done, because I think that the majority in the House feels the Prime Minister has behaved appallingly. Well, that, that... Been absolutely disgusting. I think sensible Conservatives in the Cabinet are embarrassed, and I think sensible former ministers, very mainstream yeah. and respected figures like Julian Smith, the former government chief whip, Bob Neill, the former minister, are very middle-of-the-road, sensible people, are clearly horrified by what they have witnessed over the last nine days. The Prime Minister, frankly, really does need to up his game. 